I'm going to show you a little bit about vibrato and how it works and why we use it. So if you don't use vibrato, you have a very, very clear and pure sound like this. And to enhance that sound a little bit, you would use a vibrato, which is basically altering the pitch of the note I just played by moving around your left hand a little bit, so you fix the note you just played, it's this, and start to wobble around a little bit. So you can vary the speed of the vibrato from very slow to very fast. In the 16th and 17th century, the use of vibrato wasn't uh, so much as we use it today or for later repertoire. Uh, the main means of expression was the bow, actually, the use of the bow speed and the articulation and so on. Vibrato was mainly used as an ornament and not so much as an expression device. As for example, um, I play... Maybe something like that. Uh, whereas then when we go later in repertoire to um, the late 18th century, it, was, it started to be used a little bit more as an expression device. It's probably a very, very small vibrato, like... Um, the grip of the violin wasn't so much as we had now with it chin rest uh, or the shoulder rest where you can do a much much bigger vibrato which would probably be in use nowadays pretty much which would be something like that so where you use a lot of arm rather than just the wrist or just just the finger so some people use that as well in the OE and uh, historical performance practice in general we do think more about what we apply to the music to make it more special rather than having a little bit of a bit more generic means of expression as would be continuous vibrato for example or uh, the use of a very very um, equal bow strokes and so on especially a piece like Semiramide gives us a lot of options to experiment with it and it's actually a lot of fun.